Yo, my name is Chili Kid. I just killed my interview on Next Up. Thank you so much for coming to kick it with the next up team. What's yeah, up? We appreciate it. How are you today? I'm good. So, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm 18. You know, I was born and raised in Stillman. So, you know, I got family like, you know, in Indiana and like Ohio. So I'll be visiting them a lot. All that. So being from Stone Mountain, tell me about your experience growing up. Uh, I mean, honestly, just like, I was always around skate parks. You know, my brother was a skateboarder, so I was always chilling with him, like skaters, all that. So, like, that's how it really is. You know, in Stone Mountain, it's like, you know, Mountain Park, you know, all this other stuff got skate parks in it, so. Do you skate? Uh, nah, I used to, but I don't know, like, I can't really do that. <laughs> <laughs> what about, happened? Where did where the passion go? I kept falling, so. <laughs> I mean, honestly, so. It wasn't for you? Nah. What was high school like for you? It was lit. Uh, I know we used to do something called Freestyle Fridays, and that's how I really got into it. Like, I'd go in, and then, uh, you know, I saw people in a group, you know, and they just became my friends. Started, like, Freestyle Friday, you know, all that. Actually, one day we had a janitor come out. This man was bald. He took off his hat and started rapping, too, so, so it was lit. And then the administrators managed to quit, all that, but, you know. If you could tell your administrators one thing right now, what would you tell them? that I'm up, like, <laughs> up next, you already know. Cause you know, my administrators, my teachers, they didn't really believe me like that. Cause I was, I was like failing classes, you know, I didn't really care about that, I was in the studio too much. At what age did you really start going to the studio frequently? Probably around 14. I think it was like 2014 when I started, like really going to the studio. You know, my man's uh, Moon's on the track, you know, he's who I started with and you know, I still be recording with him all that. What is your favorite song to date that you've recorded? Probably like Zoom and Love because, you know, they're the ones that blew up. So, I mean, honestly, when I, when I made Love, you know, a lot of people saying I sound like Uzi in it, but, you know, I didn't see it. I just made that song. So, that I was did, a few years ago. I did hear that. So they were comparing you to Uzi a few times, calling you the 2.0. How do you feel about that? <laughs> honestly, I don't really care that much because, I don't know, like, uh, it, it don't bother me like that. Like, I'm pretty cool about it. I mean, hopefully, like, people will start, like, you know, seeing me as me. But, you know, I guess that's, that's going to be a while for that happen. How are you going to differentiate yourself from that image? Uh, I feel like I make a lot of, like, heartbreaking music. And Uzi sort of just sound like that lit playing, you know. I mean, it, you know, the EXO tour life, you know, that's, like, the only song I really heard about him. You know, where he was doing all like, you know, like the heartbreak, you know, stuff like that, so. So how would you describe your sound? Sort of like a, if Blink-182, if they all became rappers. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite band? Blink-182. You just saying because? Huh? No, I mean, they, they're my favorite band for real, you know. Like, even with the numbers, like, I also wanted to have numbers in my name, you know, Trilly Kid 77, you know, I started making that as, like, a trademark, you know, because Blink-182, you know, they always had, you know, I've always been listening to bands that got names in it, and I just think it's dope. What do the triple sevens mean to you? It means, like, like, really positive, you know, a lot of people doing, like, 666, all that just for the image, like, I don't like that dark energy, I don't want none of that around me, so it's just positive vibes. Is that what you try to exhibit in your music and your sound? I feel like my music can be negative in ways, but, you know, I try and make, like, negative into positive, you know, so I guess you could say that. Speaking about numbers, what is 19 J District? That's, you know, that's my label, you know, my brother's for real. Uh, it's, also, it's honestly like a God thing, you know, that happened, you know, if I had I never known Ray, because Ray's father actually got in contact with him, and then that's how it all started. So if I never met Ray, I probably would have never met 19 District. So who's Ray? That's Ray Rockman. That's my boy. Uh, in ninth grade, we actually started making music together. All that. How did you guys link up? Was it just or in class for kicking it? Yeah, he was. He was in my class, and then you know I was a big fan of Ray Schremer, and so I was already wanting to be a rapper. And then I asked Ray, I was like, Yo, yo, you make music? 
he's like he's like nah but i want to so then you know it sort of just ended up like that and like i said mountain park you know that's where we always always used to kick it so then me and him just went to mountain park started freestyling and all that tell me what your recording atmosphere is like it's really vibey like you know my man's moons on the track you know he be doing his thing he got the uh disco ball in there <laughs> he be plugging me in the wall it just be colors everywhere has it changed over the years as you've oh, changed yeah. and grown? Tell me what the differences are. Um, you mean like about like moves and like the studio, the like atmosphere? Yeah, tell me how you've grown as an artist. Yeah, uh, I mean like we just keep moving forward, you know, every day like I, you know, I strive to make a better song than the one I just put out. So that's how I'm always thinking about it. So you strive to make a better song every time you go to the studio. How do you make sure that happens? Just gotta work harder, you know. So, I mean, just think about different things, you know. I don't wanna be an artist that's always talking about one thing. I don't wanna be like repetitive or anything like that. Who are some of the people that influenced you? ASAP Rocky, definitely. You know, uh, that's actually where I got Trilla from. You know, he had a song on an album. It's like one of our old albums. And the song was Trilla, that was my favorite song at the time. So, Trilla, and then, you know, I started as a kid, so, Trilla Kids, so I just came to think. When do you think was the first time you actually sat down and made a, or wrote a full song? Uh, probably when I was like 12. I actually used to uh, be in like a metal band called Darker Than Black. Because <laughs> I was huge into metal then. So uh, that's actually, you know, me and my friend, uh, we just write like metal songs and stuff. So probably when I was 12. What were you writing when you were 12? Um, I was, <laughs> what was it? I, just, I don't know. It just it, like I uh, actually got the name from an anime show that we used to watch called Darker and Black, and it was just stuff like that. So just like stuff to, that he be going through. Like he's like a phantom type thing. So we just writing like some metal stuff. You know, my brother was in a, a metal band. He actually played at Warped Tour. So then you know he would, like helped me with it a little bit. That's pretty dope. Yeah. If you were a cartoon character, who would you be? Johnny Tess. <laughs> in school, I actually had a, um, you know, I had spiky hair a lot. Everyone called me like Johnny Tess. You know, he's, I mean, he's got big eyebrows, like blue eyes, so I feel like it sort of fit in. That's nice. Yeah. These kids don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> what was some of the people that you listened to growing up? Uh, I know, like, Pierce the Veil, The Devil Wears Prada. You know, growing up, I listened to a lot of, like, rock and roll. It'd be like ACDC or Def Leppard or like, you know, just like stuff, you know, like them, you know. So, you know, cause, but, you know, that's from my dad. You know, every time I'm in the car with my dad, he'd be playing the rock station. And actually, um, I know I remember my brother, he had like an MP3 player and I had to have been like eight or something. And then, you know, every time he was gone, you know, he'd, hide, he'd like have it hidden like under his pillow. So I just like, I started listening to Lil Wayne. So... That's how, that's, he's the one that put me in rap anyway, so. When did you realize that you wanted to be a rapper and not into metal? Uh, probably when I was like 13 in eighth grade. What changed it? What was the moment? Lil Wayne, like, <laughs> I found a song, I remember the first song I heard, it wasn't like an official song he put out, but I was probably too young to be listening to that. It's called Pussy Monster. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's, so, you know, Lil Wayne, you know, he, he got me a rap, you know, because in the song when he was talking about it, you know, like he was on stage and you just hear the crowd go crazy. So then, you know, I wanted something like, something like that. I wanted to walk out and like people know who I am and stuff. Do you feel like people know who you are now? Definitely. Like, I mean, even when I was in school, you know, I wasn't too big. I will just probably make like 2000 like views on one song, but you know, people would be like, yo, that's Trilla Kid, or, I mean, now I can go into the store, like, I go to Chick-fil-A, you know, everywhere, I, you know, and, like, people know me, and they're just like, yo, that's Trilla, yo, can I get a picture, all that. How does that make you feel? It made me feel good, you know, because I like attention, but I don't like too much attention, but I guess that's sort of come with a job. So what do you want to do when you get to the point where, no matter what, it's all attention? How are you going to balance that? It's not, probably, like... Just work on my music, that's it. <laughs> I mean, music sort of put me in my own zone, so. What's the one thing you don't want to happen once you get big, big lit? Uh, Cause you're already lit. It's yeah. not the point. 
But once you get to the top tier level, what's one thing you don't want to happen? I don't want to fall off stage when I'm performing. <laughs> Please wear shoes, grip. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, it wasn't too long ago, I think a few weeks ago or something, I was drinking water, and then I spit on, like, an NFL player, you know, because we was at his house, and then, so I don't want something like that to happen again. So. Are you, would you mind telling me how you spit it out? Like, how All did right. the water leave your mouth? So I was just drinking water, went down the wrong tube or something, and then I just sprayed it everywhere. And then, like, he turned around. I looked, he thought he was going to be my ass, but, you know, he was cool. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're gonna have to practice this. <laughs> what is some of the music that you're working on right now? I got an album called Everlasting Tragedy. It's like, it's sort of like a Romeo and Juliet story. So, like, at the beginning of the album, like, being this girl in, like, a really good relationship, and as, like, the songs keep going, like, you know, down a track list, like, the relationship sort of, like, fades away. I mean, it's not anything I really experienced because I wanted it to be like, like I said, Romeo and Juliet, you know, how their story is. So, like, that's a tragedy, so I wanted something like that. Have you ever been in love? Yes, but then she actually moved away. Well, where did she go? She went to Florida. I don't want to talk too much about it. Right her. around the corner. You say that like she, she went to left. Let's okay. well, see, the thing is, like, she, she had a, it was sort of complicated. Like, she had a man, right? But her man would always, like, uh, like you know, diss her, like, say she ain't shit and all this other stuff. And so when her and her man's, like, sort of broke off, like, I started getting into, you know, like, talking with her, trying to help her through all that depression and all that stuff. Because she had stuff going on, like, at her house, you know, to, like, with her family all that. So I was sort of there for her, but then like, I guess she didn't really see it like that. And so she she went back with, like to her old man's. That was like abusive and all that shit. So you're a gentleman. Uh, actually, nah. I dated. Hey, no. I dated this one girl that was a hoe in eighth grade, and she broke up with me because she said I was too nice. And then after that, I sort of <laughs> haven't been nice at all. You can't let that emoji son. It's just the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, sort of, it's just like, yo, if you don't feel the same way about me, then, you know, I'm just going to treat you like everybody else. So what is your perfect girl? Tell the world right now. She might be watching, she might be ready to find you. Yo, if you are red bone and you funny, <laughs> you got a good personality, then, yeah, you can hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> hit my man. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how, I mean, that's how it is. He's going to be a gentleman for you specifically. For that's you. It. mm, -mm. It's facts, yeah. It's cool. I support you. <laughs> if you like it, I love it. We love you, sis. Yeah. Right, bro? Okay. <laughs> What's on your playlist right now? What are you currently listening to? Listen to a lot of little, little key, little got it. You know, Young Thug, Lil Uzi, you know, Juice World, and also like I'm trying to think of somebody else. Gerbo, definitely Gerbo. That's my man. Like he definitely like an inspiration. Also T Grizzly, because you know. If if they can get out of places like, you know, that's that bad, like, I can definitely make it, you know, from coming where I'm at. So, they're a big inspiration. What's one thing you would like to tell your fans about yourself that they might not know? I'm nicer than I look. You know, I'll be in comments, people be trying to roast me, I'll be roasting them back. And then, <laughs> like, yeah, you know, I saw that, I was going through the comments, I was deleting some of the ones I put, because, you know. But, yeah, I'm nicer than I look. So if somebody wanted to come up to you right now as a fan, what shouldn't they do to tick you off? I shouldn't step in my shoes. <laughs> like, because I be wearing Air Forces a lot. You step in my shoes, like, that's over with. Also, I be drinking energy drinks. If you spill my energy drink, they're going to be a problem, so. What's your favorite flavor of energy drink? Shit, it's probably Red Bull, you know. I was drinking a lot of Mango Monster, but I had too much of that shit. It's that shit right. was hurting my stomach, yeah. It's all right. It's all about growth. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, we know that you make amazing music. We heard some really cool joints. What should they be looking out for when you put out your new project? Definitely listen to the song. Like, uh, especially like the first time you listen to it, listen to it in order so you can get the whole story and like try and pay attention to like what I'm saying in the verses, what I'm saying in the hook. And then you understand it. But, you know, after that, go crazy with it, you know. 
Well, Shrilla, we do appreciate you stopping by the next up studio, kicking it with my family. Yeah, it was fun. You're yeah. fun. See ya. Wait, before you go, right, don't right, can't right, lose right, you. Tell them where they can find your music. Yeah, I'm on, media. I'm on I'm uh, on Spotify, you know, iTunes, uh SoundCloud, all that stuff, YouTube. Uh and uh, yeah, my social media is just Trillicate seven seven seven. You know that's on Twitter and Instagram, and all that. So yeah, thanks. Alright, cool. <laughs> <laughs>